So we just released the new YOLO 11 model. We have a new member in the YOLO family. We now have V11. So we're basically just going to see an overview over the new model in this video here, how we can run inference, training, and all of that. We're going to go through documentation and also what are the new highlights of this new YOLO 11 model. And then at the end, we're going to see some very awesome results. So first of all here, let's just start inside the blog post. We've created a whole blog post around this announcement of YOLO 11. So we can basically just go in and read more about the detail and so on. We're going to go into the documentation in just a second, but you can go over the blog post, get to know more about YOLO 11, what are different tasks and so on that you can do. We can both do optic detection, instant segmentation, classification, post estimation, or in bounding boxes, exactly the same as YOLO V8. We're also going to see later on some comparisons and so on, and also the benchmarking results. So the new YOLO 11 model is basically state of the art. It has both better accuracy, but also faster inference speed compared to all the other YOLO models. We have YOLO V8 from Ultralytics, then we have YOLO V9 and YOLO V10. And now we also have YOLO 11, which is released here by Ultralytics. So we can use all the different tasks, the whole framework and so on. It's just a few lines of code and we can now get started with this new model. So let's just take a look at the benchmark results before we go into documentation to see how we can run inference and also train this new model. So here we do a comparison with all the other versions in the YOLO family. So we have YOLO V8, YOLO V9, 10, and now also 11, but also all the other versions. We see the new model highlighted in white here. So it has pretty much better performance compared to all the other YOLO models, both on the average position, on the Cocoa data set, but also the inference speed, as we can see down here on the X axis. So this is basically just the latency, how long it takes to process a single image. So the number of milliseconds per image. We can see we have the X large, large, medium, small, and the nano version as well. So you can go in and choose which one you want to use. You can take your pre-trained model, fine tune it on your own custom data set. Again, you should go in and do comparisons with all the other versions. Okay, so let's now jump into the Ultralytics documentation. If you go inside the models tab, you can find all the different versions of the YOLO models that we have. So now we have this new YOLO 11 model. We have the benchmark results here that we just talked about, and then also the key features. So basically we'll just implement a bunch of new features using some of the advantages from YOLO V8, YOLO V10 and so on and combines all of this. So now we have the most efficient, the most accurate, but also the fastest model that can run inference on your own applications and projects. So definitely going to check out this model here. Again, it supports all the tasks and also the modes. So inference, validation, training, and you can export the models to whatever optimization frameworks that we're supporting here at Ultralytics. Detection, intersegmentation, key point, post estimation, R in bounding boxes and classification, all those different tasks are supported as well, exactly the same as the ULV8 model. And if we go down to the user examples, you can see how you can use it with just a few lines of code, either in Python or from the command line interface. We just need to specify a few lines of code. We need to specify the model that we want to use. So now we just have this YOLO 11 n or whatever variation that you want to use, .pt. Then we can specify the data set if you want to do training. So we have our data YAML file where we need to specify our data directories. We have videos covering all of that. It will be the exact same pipeline as all the other versions and all the other models, videos and so on that we have. So it's just swapping out the model, testing it out. And that's also why it's so good to use the Autolytics framework because you can pretty much just test out four or five different models at the same time, which is swapping out the model path. So now we have a high level overview over the new YOLO 11 model. We saw some of the details and also the benchmarking results. So it's now going to see how we can use it in our own custom Python script. I can just take this code snippet. There we go from the user examples. I'll go inside my code editor. I have a bunch of videos here that we're going to run through just to see the results. And we're doing, going to do comparisons. Remember to compare it on your own data sets as well, because the new model might not be better compared to some of the other models. It really depends on your use cases and also your own data. So we've just created a brand new Python script here all the way from scratch. We have the video files. We can just copy paste it in. We create a new instance of our YOLO model. So we just need to specify YOLO 11. We can choose the nano, small, medium, large, and extra large model as we're used to. Then the data set if you want to train it, or if you just want to run inference, we can call the predict method. If you want to run optic tracking, you can just call dot track instead of dot predict, and we're pretty much good to go. We can use the Autolytics framework in the exact same way as we're used to. So right now, let's just skip the training part and just specify the YAML file. We have videos covering all of that. You can pretty much just do it in five to 10 minutes. And then you will just take your exported model, 
swap it out with the path here, and then you're running inference on your own custom train model. So now let's go down and grab one of these videos. So let's just go inside this folder. I'm just going to take the first one or the ice skating. I'm going to copy the relative path. We can just throw it in directly here. So that will be the source for the first argument. We want to save it as well, the video. And we also want to show it. So we set that equal to true, so we can see the results while it's acting like doing the inference. It's going to return a generator where we can go and extract the bounding boxes, the confidence scores, class IDs, and so on. And we also have videos covering that. So now we're pretty much good to go. Make sure when you're using the new YOLO 11 model that you upgrade Autolytics. Either you pip install it from scratch or you can go in and pip upgrade it as well. Just make sure that you have the latest version so you have YOLO 11. If you run into errors, this is most likely the problem where you just need to basically just pip install Autolytics and then upgrade. Should be good to go. Now we'll download the model automatically and you can use it in your own projects and applications. So now we're good to go. We can just run this Python script. I'm inside my content environment. I'm just going to activate it. And now we can run the Python script, yolo11.py. It will open up the video stream, download the model automatically at the first time. If you have your own custom trained models, you can just swap out the path and it will take that and run inference with that model. There we go, we can see it downloads the weights and we should be able to see the results. This is just running on my MacBook CPU. We can see it's around 40, 50 milliseconds per image where we act like having this latency. So this is pretty cool. That is almost 20 frames per second just on a CPU. If you're using like NVIDIA GPUs and so on, it will be able to like run significantly more frames per second. You can also export into an optimized framework and you can run even faster, get up to like three, five times inference speed without really losing accuracy just by using those optimization frameworks. So these were some pretty cool results. We just saw the ice skating example. If you go inside the runs, it will also save the video file because we specified that as an argument. You can go in and play around with the arguments, confidence scores, intersection or union, and so on. There we go. We have skis, snowboard sometimes, the person, it pretty much just detects the person here in the foreground a lot, but also the second one here, and it pretty much just keeps track of it even though we're not running optic tracking on top of this. So I was gonna grab one of the other ones. So I'm going to grab this one, copy the relative path, and this is how easy it is to test out on video streams and so on. Just swap it out, it's good to go. We can even try to run tracking on top of this, so that will just be model.track. There we go. We run a Python script again. And now we're running optic tracking as well. So instead of just doing optic detection on each individual frame, we add it over time with this tracker that we are using. So now we assign an ID to each individual bounding box as well, as long as we're tracking it in the frame. So we can see car, car, person. Let me just pull up the results. So now we have track. We see we have a person here, two persons, and we have a person in the middle, cars in the background, we have some traffic lights and so on. Again, go in and, and tune the confidence score and so on if you're not getting your predictions or fine tuning on your specific data set. So these are some pretty cool results. This is the new state-of-the-art model. It's both faster, more efficient, and also better accuracy. This is how easy it is to use. Go in and check it out, how we can train it. We can just call train. We need to have our label data. We're good to go. You can now use it in your own applications and projects.